Welcome to Her Life Unscripted Podcast, inspiring burnt out, stressed out, and stretched thin women to embrace the unscriptedness of life. Hosted by Anna Osborne. Hello and welcome to Her Life Unscripted Podcast. It is Anna Osborne, your host, and I am just delighted to be here with all of you today. Today we are actually, you guys are listening to episode 40. So it's amazing to me that we have already been podcasting for that long and really just diving into the identity of what Her Life Unscripted is. And I am just really in awe of what it's becoming, this community, this way to encourage and really embrace all of our difference differences, but from a very empowered and encouraging place. So it's been very awesome to be able to be on this journey for the last 40 episodes. It is a cold January morning and you probably hear my dog walking around in the background. She's trying to find a soft place to land because it is so chilly. And so I am looking forward to just kind of, you know, hunkering down for the next hour or so and being able to connect with all of you guys. I've got a really great interview to share and I'll kind of give you some info about that as we get rolling. But I would love to hear from you guys as this new idea that I'm kind of working with, which is each month doing sort of a loose theme that kind of connects the shows together. And last month we talked about this idea of, you know, really achieving greatness in our lives by giving to others rather than trying to achieve some sort of status. And it was really cool to kind of see how all of you embrace that and some of the feedback that you guys had about the different ideas we talked about. And as you know, through the whole month of January, we've been talking about this idea of wellness. And what I've loved so far about the feedback that I've gotten from all of you is that we're really tackling this idea of wellness from a totally different angle than I think what's being sold to us right now with and advertisements and media. You know, January is historically known as exercise and weight loss month, right? <laughs> and my poor sister's birthday in January. I know I mentioned that before, but you know, she really has this birthday in early January where we all, everybody's so focused on exercise and weight loss that we end up not wanting to eat as much cake with her. And that's just not fun. So what I love about this month's topic is that we're talking about wellness from a totally different perspective. And it's been really fun to do that. I'm thinking about my own journey through wellness. What I've really committed to the last few months is just creating more movement in my life. And you'll hear Lisa Crilly and I, for those of you that listen to that interview in episode 38, you'll kind of hear a little bit about that journey. But what's been really cool as I've really been focused on that idea of movement is how much fun I'm having with it and being able to kind of remove some of the rules or restrictions that I used to feel around exercise that it needed to look a certain way versus this idea of movement, which I'm really focused on as a way to create self-care, I get to have more fun with it, right? Because whether that's going for a walk with the kids or going for a run and listening to my favorite music or going to the gym or just dancing around the house, like all of it is just creating more movement in my life. And I'm just seeing this um, playfulness that comes from it. So it's been a really cool journey. Today's episode is one that I know all of you guys are going to really get a lot out of. I met Sarah Angelides from a mutual friend, actually a friend who was on the podcast many, many episodes ago, Gina Ballard. And she was just amazing for those of you that were able to listen to her interview. And if not, I encourage you guys to go back. I think it was within the first 10 or so episodes, but she's just amazing. But she introduced me to Sarah. And like you guys know from View with Gina, I've known Gina since elementary school, since I was probably seven or eight years old. And she introduced me to Sarah and I really got a chance to kind of dive into Sarah's work and learn about it. Her website, Sarah Angel Leads, and I'll include that in the show notes, is just a beautiful, beautiful website. But Sarah was so generous to come on the show and really share about kind of how her diagnosis and recovering from lupus created the spiritual awakening within her. Sarah holds a master's degree in counseling art therapy and is also a facilitator for Soul Collage, which is a personal development and spiritual growth workshop that she leads in the St. Louis area. And she also facilitates workshops that really focus on supporting individuals on tuning into their wisdom of their inner guide in order to create healing and transformation. And that's truly what we talk about during this interview. Sarah has this great way of describing the really the definition of intuition, which I love because it feels like oftentimes we hear of this idea of intuition, but we don't really know what that means. It isn't a concrete definition. And Sarah does just a simply lovely job in describing that. And I love this idea of looking at our intuition as a tool for 
wellness, right? Of connecting from the top of our heads to the tips of our toes in order to create that whole body wellness. We need to have this strong faith in our intuition as being this great guide, this great inner wisdom. And Sarah does just a beautiful job of describing that. So I really encourage you guys to spend a little bit of time writing down some notes as you're listening to this interview, because I know that when we did the interview, there was a lot that I took away from it in terms of how I can utilize, you know, her tools and her aspects of intuition and the growing pains that come from leaning into it as a way to create more total body wellness and soul spiritual wellness. So I encourage you guys to do, you know, that note taking as you're listening and as always, enjoy it, share it, let people know what you're listening to and how it's impacting your life. Um, At the end of the show, I'll kind of include some of the links that she talks about, but also I'll include those in the show notes. So if you want to reach out to either myself or Sarah, you've got the the tools to be able to do that. So without further ado, Sarah Angelides. All right. Well, I am excited to introduce Sarah Angelitas to the episode today for her life unscripted. She has been so generous to give of her time and just spend a little bit of time slowing down and chatting with me. We were actually introduced by a mutual friend who I have known since grade school and who was on the podcast very early on in this adventure. So I'm just excited to have Sarah on the show and to get to know her and allow my audience to get to know her too. So welcome, Sarah. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, absolutely. And before I started recording, I kind of gave your formal introduction, but is there kind of any, do you want to give a short little intro to the audience so they can kind of get a sense of who you are? Sure. I just kind of started to venture out on my own business as an art therapist. I formally trained as an art therapist, but I've kind of taken it in a personal development and spiritual direction and doing workshops and working with people one-on-one. And that kind of sprung from my own personal journey and my own spiritual journey and kind of going in that direction and really relying on my sense of connection to my intuition and different avenues of connecting in with that intuition to guide me through my life. And And that's kind of led me to where I'm at. Well, exciting. Well, I'm excited just to dive in and and like I said, get to know you more and share your story with my audience. And so, like I said, we were introduced through a mutual friend who Gina is just somebody I think is just one of the most beautiful people. And you guys have the privilege of having her closer to you than she is to me here over on the West Coast now. And so thinking about kind of knowing that we have that person in common, I just know that this conversation will be one that is just full of energy and and warmth and, and love. And I'm really excited about it. Yeah, Gina's a wonderful person and a good friend, and she's really been supportive on my journey as well. And I've only known her a short time, but we've gotten really close in a short amount of time. Yeah, she's one of those people that you meet and you feel like you've known for years. I mean, I've literally known her since I was six, but (laughs) but she is. She just has this just amazing energy that people gravitate to, and they do. They have such a, a warm experience from her, and it does feel like they've known her forever. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And yeah, her spirit is so bright. And I feel like it really helps you. She just has this wonderful ability to mirror the spirit within yourself so that you really shine brighter when you're around her. It's just I think it's just kind of a natural gift that she has. And so yeah, it's beautiful. Absolutely. So you had, you, like you said, you were trained as an art therapist and you've really shifted that work for you both personally and professionally to align with kind of your own awakenings and your own growth. And I know that what you shared with me was a lot of it or a big piece of it too connects with your healing journey through lupus. Mm-hmm. And so how would you kind of describe how that journey has looked of being able to consist, you know, hold with what you were trained to do, but really weave it into something that's so much more deeply connected to who you are as a person. I think because my journey with lupus, I was diagnosed with lupus in 2012, and I already was kind of on a spiritual path, and I'd been studying A Course in Miracles for many years and, you know, meditated and had kind of a spiritual practice on the back burner, I would call it. And then when I got sick, it really kind of pushed everything over the edge and really forced me to practice what I had believed, you know, really make it part of who I am rather than just something I believe. And so when I put those things into practice, it really catapulted me forward. And I had a spiritual awakening through my experience with that because I really not just believe that I'm a spirit going through, I'm a spirit going through a human experience, but I experience that. I experience myself as a spirit and that that's truly who I am and truly what 
I'm made from is this love. And when I connected with that divine love, I naturally healed. And I think um, I just believe so strongly in that. And I think now I'm very motivated to help people see that within themselves, that truth and that reality that that is who we are. And we can do all these things on the outside to help us heal. But unless we believe in miracles, unless we believe that we are truly spirits having a human experience, then it's impossible. You have to believe it before it can happen in your life. Well, yeah. And I think it's so important what you just said is that, you know, you always had this belief about who you were in the world, but then you notice through your healing process, a disconnect between actually playing that out in real life or real time. And I think that the way you describe it is that you had a diagnosis that that forced that connection between the two. And so what, I mean, living kind of those fragmented pieces that we believe all these things that we're not putting them to practice, how does that, or how do you see it playing against who we are on the inside? I think when we have a desire to heal, I think it really motivates motivates us to ask, who am I and why am I here? And there's got to be a better way. There's got to be more to life than just what we see on the outside. And I think when we connect with that in the inside, it really just changes our outside world because it's just a mirror. So once you start seeing that within yourself, believing that within yourself, it just gets reflected everywhere you look. I really had that experience and knowing that and not just believing it, but knowing it and seeing it all around me. And I think when you develop that within, it just, it just manifests naturally on the outside. Yeah. It takes on a whole energy and power of its own. Yes. And so, absolutely. And so tell me how you have woven your art therapy practice into this really new way of practicing life and living, you know, kind of in that spirit. Well, I think when I worked as a clinical art therapist right out of grad school, I kind of dove in deep with uh, working with clients with a lot of trauma. And I really didn't have tools at the time to kind of not take all that home. I would absorb it all and then I'd get very depressed and it kind of triggered my own stuff. And I realized that I hadn't dealt with my own stuff. And so once I kind of, and it wasn't you know, I had a passion for doing using art because I felt like art can really bypass our thinking mind, our conscious mind, and go straight into our hearts and go straight into our soul and reveal things to us that we maybe weren't aware of. And I've always believed in that process, but in a clinical environment, a lot of times you're forced to work as a therapist or you're forced to, you know, and it just doesn't always feel good. I mean, I, I had some transformation with clients, but not always. And I wanted to go deeper. I wanted to work with people that want wanted to take it to the spiritual level. And so that is kind of what that desire was always there. And I think once I had my own spiritual kind of awakening, I just sort of asked for that. I asked for how can I have you know, bring these things together into sort of my purpose. And I was looking, my son started kindergarten, I was looking for a way to, you know, have a purposeful career. And I wasn't sure what it looked like. And I just started piecing things together. And my friend of mine mentioned soul collage to me and thought that it was a good fit. And it's kind of a combination of the spiritual, the psychological, and the creative expression. So I was like, wow, this is exactly all the things that I felt like it was a wonderful tool that fit into, and it's all used to tune into your own intuition. And that I just thought that all kind of came together beautifully. And I thought this is what I'm meant to do. Oh, such a powerful awakening when we really find the ways to translate what we feel and what we know to be true into an expression. Yes. And I just love doing it. I love working with people. I love tapping into that. And it just brings me so much joy. And that I feel like when you tap into that, you know, you're in the right place. Yes. When you feel the juice, right? Yes. Yes. So tell, share a little bit with the audience so they can kind of get familiar with, with soul collage. So Soul Collage was started by a psychotherapist. She's now deceased, Sina Frost. And she was not an art therapist, but she had an interest in tarot and also in using art in her therapy and play therapy. And she just kind of started working with that and also working with archetypes. And so she kind of brought all these things together to this specific process. And it's just so beautiful. You make these collage cards that represent different aspects of your personality or your soul. And they're really, 
just this deck of cards that represent who you are. And then they can be used as sort of a self-reflective exercise on a daily basis, or you can use them to answer questions that you're struggling with. It's so fun to make them with a group and you can have different themes. And then I also can do readings with the cards, which is really fun too. And I can even use my cards and guide you through a process where you're kind of looking into my cards and what seeing what you see through the images and what they insights they bring to you. So it's just endless, the possibilities. Sounds like. And tell me, and so in terms of your, you know, your kind of your day-to-day work and how you integrate this in with your ongoing work with clients, can you describe that a little bit so we can kind of get a, a snapshot into what it looks like? Yeah. So, so I do like this Thursday, I'm having a soul collage and mediumship class. And so we're going to be creating cards with a emphasis on loved ones that have passed to the other side or ancestors, you know, also that have passed that we want to connect to. And we'll use the cards to kind of, you know, honor them. And then we will do a journaling exercise to interact with them and really get in touch with communicating with them, essentially. And what the images do is they really take away that, like I mentioned earlier, that thinking mind and kind of go into the spiritual place where you where it's more open, there's more expansion. And because there really is no separation between us and the spirit world. And so it kind of bridges that and allows you to open up to connect. Yeah, very interesting. So that's um yeah, so that's one <clears throat> class I'm having on Thursday and then I've also done, you know, just d- dedicated to gratitude where you're just kind of reflecting on things that you feel grateful for in your life and making cards. You can make cards to represent people in your life. You can represent an angel or a saint or a guide that you feel connected to, a chakra or a energy center in the body. You can represent, you know, your critical self that or your worrier self or your joyful self, you know, different aspects of your personality. So, so with those different themes, different workshops will focus on a different theme and we'll kind of go in depth and work with that part of you or personality part. And then I also do the one-on-ones. So like on or later this month, I'll be doing one-on-one sessions with people too. I'll have like a special day and I'll just kind of schedule in people all day long and just give people a taste of what it's about. Yeah, very, very interesting. And so part of it, you've used the word intuition a couple of times. And so will you describe a little bit to folks about what you mean when you say that? Because I think it's so so fascinating when we hear how people define things. It's like we can mm-hmm. connect to it even more. So will you describe a little bit what you mean when you're talking about intuition? Sure. When I say intuition, I mean connecting into our inner knowing, our inner wisdom. I believe that we all within us, there is a voice that speaks through God. So, and when I say God, I mean the universal consciousness, all that is, that we have a direct link to the wisdom and of the whole universe. And when we connect into that, I think our intuition or our sense of connection to all that is will guide us and is is very wise. And when we tune into it, we might get answers that are unexpected. And I think it's never steered me wrong to follow that part of myself. So I think that's how I would define it. I definitely agree that I've never been steered wrong when I've really tuned into that inner wisdom or that intuition. And yet it's something that I find we can be really apprehensive around or fearful of what it means when we really turn to that inner voice or that inner wisdom and let that be our truth. Have you experienced that too? That kind of, the, yeah, that it's apprehension? not always logical. It's not, it doesn't always make sense. It, it Sometimes you're guided to do things you never thought you would do, or it comes out of nowhere. And in some ways when it comes out of nowhere is when you really know it's your intuition <laughs> because it's, you know, your ego can get in the way or, our human selves, our ego can kind of get in the way of that and bring up fears because it is so unknown. And, you know, we're not really taught to trust our intuition as we're kids. And, you know, we grow up kind of bypassing our intuition. And so I think that's where a lot of the doubt comes from is just believing we have to rely on other people or Mm -hmm. our environment or outside circumstances to determine what we should do in a situation. Yeah. And so I, I struggle with that a lot with my son, you know, he's six and I'm always trying to encourage him to listen to his intuition, but there are times where you have to, you know, you have to guide them as well. So, you know, I'm always learning too. I think it's a lifelong journey of learning how to tune in and, and trust and encourage yourself and others to listen to that wise voice within Yeah. And I think too, you know, I think about kind of my own evolution. If I think about to my teen years, there was probably little, if any, awareness around intuition, right? And then kind of 
late teens, early 20s, things would happen. And I go, eh, I kind of had an inkling beforehand that this is this is how it was going to play out, right? And then late 20s, it was like I would have that intuition or that internal wisdom and I would ignore it and do mm-hmm. and, and just go, oh, well, you're just, you're just annoying. Like, you know, I'm not paying attention to you. I wasn't really honoring it as this place of deep wisdom. It was more just this annoyance. And then, you know, kind of into my 30s and now into my late 30s, that is the place that I go when it comes to decisions, when it comes mm-hmm. to movement, when it comes to, you know, just those next steps is turning inward versus, I love what you said, what we're so habitually routine to do, which is turn to other people, which is turn to our environment, which is turn to, you know, the media or social right. media polls or whatever it is right, rather right. than really turning inward. And so it is this beautiful evolution, but it does take time to trust that that internal wisdom is really the guide. And I think that is why I say that my journey with lupus was such a spiritual awakening for me because it really caused me to to trust that voice more than anything else because it was a time where I totally surrendered. I felt so powerless and I was in a lot of pain and I you know felt very helpless. I couldn't take care of my son. I didn't know what my future was going to be like. You know, they don't know really a whole lot about it. It's not very predictable of, you know, the way the course can get really bad or it can get better. You know, you just don't know. And so I think that position really caused me to go inward. And that's what, that's the only thing I trusted. And that it just kind of like put my world upside down where I just, just, that was the only place I would go. And it guided me what to eat. It guided me how to take care of myself. It guided me to the supportive environment that I needed to be in. It guided me how to, you know, how to think and how much to meditate and everything I did in my healing journey came from that. It led me to the right books and it led me to the right doctors. You know, it just was one thing after another. So I think it just really solidified that faith in that voice and trusting it. Yeah. Oh, such a power. Like you said, when we surrender ourselves to that powerless feeling, it's probably one of the most terrifying things that can happen, but also liberating in a lot of ways. Like you said, it forced you to turn inward. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. So thinking about, you know, kind of that apprehension or that fear that comes up when we think about turning inward and really connecting with the intuition and that direct connection to universe and, and all those sorts of things, what would be for somebody that's just starting to kind of understand what intuition is, or they're just starting to be on that evolution of recognizing that that is a huge part of them, but it's a huge part that they're not even familiar with. What right. would be some things that would be kind of just very foundational steps about being able to lean into our intuition. Well, I feel like really paying attention to what brings you joy is always a first step in listening to your intuition and starting to build that trust and that joy. You know, what, what makes you feel light? What environments and activities and I don't know, anything that, that you love to do or love to be around you know, whether it's going for a walk in the park or it's art for me, you know, for some people it's art, some people it's listening to music, but it sounds really simple, but it's really getting in touch with how you feel when you're in those environments and the gratitude and appreciation of when you are in those moments and recognizing that this is a way of connecting into that direct link with my soul or with God or with the universe or all that is, whatever you want to call it, to recognize those moments. And I feel like when you connect in like that, it sort of starts to grow and you just kind of become more trusting in that part of you because you feel connected to something bigger than you. And it also connects you with something that makes you feel good, that loves you and you love it. You know, like it's just this beautiful exchange. And I don't know, that feels like one thing that's really helped me to connect in and just that gratitude for when you are connected in. Meditation is huge, whether it's five minutes or even just a few deep breaths. I mean, my son in their school, I'm so happy they're teaching them to do eight mindful breaths when they feel it. And I'm like, adults could use that. Oh my goodness, yes. You know? So I think that's a beautiful thing. You know, even just closing your eyes and taking eight mindful breaths and tuning into your breath. And I love James Van Prague talks about who's a medium talks about when you're breathing in, you're breathing the love of the universe or love of God. And when you're breathing out to think about feet, any fear or tension or resistance or judgment or whatever kind of coming out. And I think that's kind of visual is really, I really resonate with that too. I guess being an artist, I I like the visuals. (laughs) 
<laughs> yes. So I would say those two things are big and helping and uh, creating art too, obviously, is a great way to connect in with your intuition too, because you kind of surprise yourself. Absolutely. I, my mom is an artist by, she was an art major in college and she's always just been such a creative soul and, and an artist. And that's how, how I've always known my mom is as an artist. And so she was always, you know, helping out in our classroom and, you know, the Girl Scout leader that did the art and all those sorts <laughs> of things, you know? And I remember when we would have her come to our class and she would be, we'd be learning about art and things like that. And people would get so fearful around art about what, whatever it is, is this the right way to do it? Is this the right way to do it? And really her encouraging that it's the expression, right? It's like you said, we get surprised of what we create. And I think so many people are intimidated by the use of art, especially as something that's healing, you know, because art is to me, art and creativity synonymous in some ways that because it is all that expression, right? And so whatever that creative expression is, is it through art or is it through other ways, but it's that ability to communicate without words and communicate around what we're feeling, what we're experiencing, what we're kind of, you know, taking in around the world around us. Right. And with like with Soul Collage, for example, you, one of the instructions or hints, not rules is to not use words because we get stuck on words and the images can be say so much more than words can. So I love that part of it because it just really brings people into that place where they're not, and also using the collage because in in the soul collage, we use collage. So it's images that you're just picking from magazines and it's, you're, you're picking them without thinking about it and then just putting it, gluing them together. So it's less intimidating than the painting or the drawing. Because I agree with you being an art therapist that there are a lot of people that are intimidated. They get kind of blocked with that and they want it to be beautiful. They want it to express what exactly what they have envisioned that they want to express. And they, sometimes it brings up people's guards and keeps them from creating creating freely. So the soul collage is nice because it, it's magazine images. Mm-hmm. It's non-intimidating. So they're just picking images and gluing. And for some reason, that seems to break down a little bit of that preconceived idea of what art is or being intimidated by it. Yeah, that's such a great a great way to describe it too. I I did some I'm a very creative person, but not necessarily, you know, an artist in terms of the painting and, and those sorts of things. And I recently, well, probably like a year or so ago, I did two art pieces for my office. And one was out of kind of distressed wood and rocks and, and whatnot. And the other one was actually a painting of a picture that I'd seen on Pinterest. I thought, oh I like that. I'm gonna paint my own yeah. version on a canvas, right? And so I hung them both in my office and the the collage or the the rock one, it's a rock heart on distressed palettes that I kind of stained all different colors. Mm-hmm. That one was, I love it. Like I just absolutely love it, right? Yeah. The other one, the one that I actually painted, I was so blown away about how vulnerable it was to have it hanging in my office because mm-hmm. people would say, "Oh, that's new. Where did you get that?" Right? And, <laughs> you have and to talk that, about it. I had yeah. to talk about it. I had to own that that was my art, right? And as I'm lo- looking at it, I'm seeing like, "Oh gosh, I should have shaded a little bit more here." Like I start critiquing it, right? I've now become the critic of something that was really just this expression, and yet the one that the wood one was so much less vulnerable because, and you know, I think of it, the medium was different, right? Right. Whereas the art, the fluidity of the paint was such a more vulnerable experience and having clients come in and, you know, I'm a psychotherapist and you know that. And so having the vulnerable space, the container of my office and to have me showing up vulnerably in a different way Mm -hmm. was just so fascinating. And it was just a really cool, these conversations that came from me hanging up my own art and I've never done something like that before, yeah. but it was a very powerful experience personally. And then also mm-hmm. to see my clients kind of look at me of, in this way of like, wow, you're really being vulnerable with me by you hanging that's this beautiful. up. Yeah, that's beautiful. And yeah, I mean, I feel like the, our, our art is who we are, you know, it's, it's, and we talk about it, it we're talking about ourselves. So it forces us into that little bit of a vulnerable place when you create it. And I think that is some of the resistance that can come with art and that's okay. You know, I think it's one of those things that's not necessarily for everybody. And that's okay, too. You know, it's just a place, 
another tool, I think, to express our inner world and a great way to, like you said, kind of surprise you. You know, it's just kind of like it's you out there. It's, in, yes. you know, you can't hide from it. And so that that's a, that can be a good thing. And it can also be a very vulnerable and scary place to be too, you know, just putting yourself out there like that. But I imagine for your clients, that gives them really reassurance, you know, that I'm willing to put my myself, my heart, be vulnerable for you. And it just helps them see your humanity and connect with you, I think. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I've never felt vulnerable hanging art in my home, like things that I've done in my home. I've never had that experience, but it was so radically different hanging it in my office. Mm -hmm. It literally stopped me in my tracks. I thought, why am I having such a hard time, like putting the nail in the wall to hang this thing? Like, you know, so then of course I turn inward and I'm like, oh, it's because this is really flipping vulnerable and the conversations that came from it. Cause of course it's something new hanging on the wall. So everybody's, you know, oh, that wasn't there last week. What's going on? You know, they're kind of recalibrating. Yeah. Very neat. So one thing, you know, as you're talking about intuition and being able to really kind of the the practice of just baby steps into turning inward. You said about connecting to the joy and it made me think of, you know, in couples work, we so we talk so much about being attuned to our partner, right? To be able to read our partner and we, we practice attunement. But the idea is you were talking about intuition and being able to really tune into ourselves and especially from a joy place and a gratitude place, that that isn't something that we practice all the time. We do, especially as moms and and partners, we're we're learning to be tuned into everybody else and and kind of be a couple steps ahead of what their needs are, what they're, where they're at. But that practice of being able to turn inwards and really attune to ourselves is one that I think frequently we're out of practice with. Yeah. And I think, I feel like reminding yourself or I remind myself that the more attuned I am with my own intuition, the better mom I am, the better wife I am, the better mom, you know, uh, daughter I am. And I've, I've noticed that I can see it and feel it. And I think that's really helped to motivate me. And I feel like I use that also with my clients is that you can't be your best self with others until you're connected in with what you need and you just end up depleted. And I, you know, I think that's a lot of why I got sick. And I think it's one of the number one things is extreme self-care and tuning into your intuition is part of that extreme self-care. You know, what do I need? Do I need a 10 minute nap? Do I need, you know, giving yourself permission to tune in because sometimes what your intuition's telling you to do, you resist doing. You know, you don't want to take a nap. I can't take a nap. There's I got to no do time this. For that. There's no that. time to be <laughs> sick. <laughs> That's my favorite. I don't have time right now to be sick, so I'm just yes. not going to. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't work that way. It really will tell you. Maybe I need a ten minute nap. I'm tired. Maybe I need a nap, not a coffee. You know, and and it's amazing what happens when you give yourself the nap. How much more energy you have on the other side. And and I also feel like it creates a beautiful example for your children when you're tuned into your own and it teaches them to do the same, to tune into your own needs first, and then you can better take care of those around you that you love. So it and also recognizing that when we love ourselves, it's all the same. We love ourselves, we're loving everyone else. It's just it all that kind of trickles through. It's not separate. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, that's a good way of saying it. I'm going to ask you a really big question, and by no sure. means do I <laughs> expect you to have the answer for it, but why do we not want to turn inwards? Like, what are the things that you hear in the work that you do about folks not wanting to listen to their bodies or tune into that deep wisdom or connect with the intuition? Do you hear any of those? I mean, I'm sure you hear the questions or you see the, see it playing out. Have right. you been able to identify the why? Well, I think there's some resistance for one of just old patterns, you know, just the patterns that we've created over our lives to adapt to different situations that we've been through. And it maybe we had an experience where tuning in was and tuning into our own intuition and acting from that. And we were hurt in some way, Mm -hmm. you know, one time of experiencing that I feel like can create this belief that, oh, if I do that, then something bad's going to happen or people won't accept me. Or I know I struggle with it with my business and myself just expanding, allowing myself to go big or think bigger or charge more or, you know, that there's this part of us that's, uh, you know, even though the, my inner guide, I feel like is telling me it's, it's okay. It's safe. It's you're expanding. Yeah. You know, it has a, 
usually has a wise message behind it when I really look underneath it. But there are these fears of not being accepted or being made fun of or, you know, according to my own belief system. And I think we're all that way. We have these set of beliefs about what it means to do that. And so we resist doing that because we're fearful. We think that, you know, we're going to be judged in some way or, and a lot of times you are standing out. You're one, you're being led to be bigger, to be, to shine. And not everybody likes it when you shine in your life, yeah. <laughs> you know, or, or might have, or might resist or change and, and that's okay, but we're not always ready for that. Yeah. Oh, what a, that's a beautiful answer. I, I think you're so spot on. It is those experiences, even if it's just one wounding experience where we have turned inward and we've been hurt because of it, you know, we've been criticized or judged or told that it wasn't right. And that can be just so tremendously wounding to where we don't trust that. Right. Yeah. And I mean, even on my healing journey, a lot of people don't believe that changing your diet and meditating is going to help you heal, you know? So I, or, you know, going out to dinner with friends and ordering a special, you know, I don't want this and I don't want that. And, you know, because I had a, at first that brought up a lot of um, resistance within me, like, oh, they're judging me or, you know, but it forced me to really stand up strong, be bold and have faith in that part of myself and face those fears. And I feel like now I'm so much more brave and courageous and I don't, you know, I'm more me. I'm more, because you, you almost have to go through that period where you're pushing your boundaries, where it doesn't feel comfortable. And a lot of times, I mean, it's growing pains. It's just, and you kind of have to see it that way. You're like, busting because you're expanding. So it's going to hurt a little, but then you're bigger, you know, and brighter. So I guess kind of seeing that as growing pains has helped me push through. Yes. I love uh, calling them growing pains. That's so much more helpful than pain, right? Because pain right. we run from, but growing pains, we recognize those as something that we have to grow through. Yeah. Yeah. How did going through the spiritual awakening and really being able to not only tune into that soul, that, that wisdom, but also being able to see yourself get braver and bolder and, you know, move through those growing pains. How did it change the relationships around you? That's a really good question. I, you know, I feel so much happier in my relationships. I think I am much more confident in expressing boundaries and what I need than I used to be. You know, I felt like when I was really sick, it was, it was very imminent and it was very serious and there was a lot of drive behind it. But now it's just like, well, I have to live that way. Or I, it's like you're, my uh, threshold is, is bigger, you know, mm -hmm. like I just can't, I have to live more expansively. And that's a beautiful way to feel in your relationships. You know, I just feel like I'm appreciating the things in my, you know, my mother, for example, and my grandmother and my dad. And, you know, we all have things in our relationships that stress us sometimes or, or can be challenging, but I feel like I just love them more deeply. And I, see the things that I love about them more because I'm seeing it more in myself. So it's just like, and same with my husband. I'm, I tend to focus more on the things that we love about each other and the things we love to do together than the things that annoy me or the things that, you know, I'm not as happy about. And it's just, the more I focus on it, the more they expand so that it's really, it's been a positive experience for me, I feel. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's great. And I think that's important for people to hear too, as they're listening to this, that those growing pains and things like that, I think a big fear is that when we really lean into ourselves, you know, that we've, we are rocking the boat, right? Like we right. are messing up the equilibrium. <laughs> and oftentimes that ripple effect can have what we fear is really negative impact on the relationships around us. People are going, whoa, 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 you're changing. I need you back where you were because your change is making me see my change and I'm not going there, right? right. Like that's that's right. the fear. That's the head trash around being able to lean into ourselves versus what you're saying is that the relationships, the ones that really matter are actually more fulfilling because I'm showing up more me everything just grows from there so that because I'm more me and my relationships, my relationships reflect that greater joyful expression. Exactly. I feel more authentic, I think is the best word. Like not that I wasn't 
authentic before, but I might do things that they wanted, but feel a little resentful or a little like, uh, I don't feel like doing it because, but they want to. So I'm going to where I just, I, th- I don't do that anymore. And it just feels so much more authentic. You know, when I want to spend time with them, I fully show up. And when I don't, I set the boundary, you know, if I'm tired or have something that really is more important to me, I, I set the boundary and I, you know, I just, I give it to give them my full attention when I'm there. And, and I feel like they, respond better with that than kind of half-ass being there. (laughs) Even with my six-year-old, I feel that way. You know, it's like I'd rather be fully present with him and, you know, get a sitter for when I'm working than, you know, try to work when I'm with them. You know, so I've, I've just found that that works better for me. Well, and going through what you went through, it's only because of that, that you have the awareness that there was a deeper level of authenticity that you've now tapped into. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like we can, <laughs> I always, I always share it with clients. I call it my hot dog analogy. And so basically that, you know, a hot dog so compared to awareness is that when we, we first eat a hot dog, we go, oh, okay, this tastes okay. Right. And then we look at the back of it, the, the package and we go, oh my gosh, like what did I just eat? Right. And we can enjoy them again. We can have a 4th of July hot dog or a hot dog at the ballpark, but we never go back to that place again of thinking it tasted right as good before we read the ingredients. And that awareness is like that, right? Like that we can never go back to not knowing we've now our life and our world is is forever changed because now we know with like the yeah. big K, you know, we really know <laughs> and that awareness is this beautiful gift. Even if we choose not to do anything profound with that awareness, the energy around that we put out into the world is forever changed because of that awareness. Absolutely. Who knew we were talking about hot dogs? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but yeah, I love that you're saying that. You can't go back. You Mm -hmm. can't go back. And that's, that's it. And you just live life that way through that lens then from then on and it expands it. But you know, it is, it can be uncomfortable, but it's like, I think just reminding yourself again, like I was saying earlier of how when you're, even when you're in the discomfort to visualize yourself pushing through it, you know, Mm -hmm. that like shining your light through it, like busting through a container that was too small, you know? Oh, yes. Um, Because like when I did my first workshop on my own last year, I was terrified, you know, it was just, to, it was what I wanted to do, but it was also scary to put myself out there. It was a, a 12 week workshop. It was uh, based on Gabrielle Be- Bernstein's book, Make Us Miracles. Mm-hmm. And so I did kind of a book study and I was really excited, but I remember I was meditating in the room before they came in on the first day. And I just felt I could exactly kind of what I just described. I could visualize like my cells were expanding, you know, like it was scary, but I was growing. Like it's something I'd never done before. And that it's exciting to kind of push yourself beyond what you think you could have done before. Yes, yes. And I love, you know, as we kind of weave that into her life unscripted is that oftentimes, and especially the journey you're talking about, it wasn't a journey that you said you signed up for, right? Right. It was one you were sent on. And I think that that is such a powerful thing that when we're in the thick of it, and all we can feel is the discomfort or the pain is being able to visualize that this is the expanding that's happening that is allowing us to have an awareness. We'll never unknow what we're experiencing through that journey even if it's one that we didn't sign up for. That's right. Beautiful. Oh, very cool. Well, before we kind of wrap up, because I want to be so mindful of your time, you're very generous to, to give of it today. As but, you know, as we kind of think about that, is the coming to a close, is there anything, any, I'm not a big advice giver, but any words of wisdom or kind of comfort that you would like to offer the listeners around kind of just what we're talking about today of being able to really tune into ourselves, and be re- being able to really honor that, that, inner voice of wisdom. Any words of wisdom or encouragement? I would just say that you can trust that inner connection and that it won't steer you wrong, that it's, it will only guide you to jo- a life of joy and peace and happiness and expansion. And uh, any tools or any anything that you come across in your life that brings you closer to your intuition is going to lead you down that path and just to follow it, trust it. Oh, it's so amazing. That's so amazing. Well, Sarah, I cannot thank you enough for your time today. And just, I'm so excited we got to connect and I'm so grateful to, to Gina. It's really fun. Yes, absolutely. 
And so for, if folks are interested, and I, I'll include it also in the show notes, but if folks are interested in kind of learning about your work or being able to reach out to you, can you share how they would be able to do that? Yeah, you can just go to my website, which is sariangelides.com. That's S-A-R-A-H-A-N-G-E-L-I-D-E-S. I, my husband is Greek, so I am now Greek. <laughs> <laughs> so the cool name is from him. No, but it's, yeah. So you just go to sariangelides.com and it has a little bit of information about my workshops and my one-on-one sessions and things that I'm up to. So. Awesome. And just a gorgeous website. I had so much oh, well, fun thank you. <laughs> playing around on it and getting to know you through it. And it's just, it's absolutely the, the images and the colors are just breathtaking. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, absolutely. I tried to put my heart into it. So. Oh, well, it really, really shows. Awesome. <laughs> thank well, you. thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. And I look forward to talking to you again sometime. Absolutely. That was such a fun interview with Sarah, and I cannot wait to hear what you guys took away from it. I did include the link in the show notes, not only to be able to get a hold of Sarah if you're interested in following her work, but also the book that she mentioned, Gabby Berenstein, May Cause Miracles. I included that link in the show too, in case you're interested in checking it out. Of course, I added it to my Amazon wish list so that I can read it or buy it and read it at a different time. I am such a book junkie. It is absolutely ridiculous. It's something that I got from my mom. She is a book junkie and the pile of books that I have next to my bedside table that I plan on reading one day is just larger than I'd like to admit. Maybe one day I'll take a picture for you guys and show you, or I'd love if you sent me a picture of what it looks like, the book pile you have, but I did include that in the show notes. I really, really enjoyed so many aspects of Sarah and I's conversation. I think that this, again, this idea of of, of wisdom, of having this deep or of intuition as this deep self wisdom, and that oftentimes we get stuck in the cycle of listening to everybody else, you know, our environment, our peers, our partner, our coworkers, our friends, which is good things, but we are asking them or listening to them about things that only we know the answers to. And I love that idea of being able to really tune into that self wisdom, right? That deep self wisdom, that intuition as a tool to recognize that we have all the answers within ourselves. It's just so meaningful and so powerful for us to learn to really trust that, that inner voice, that inner wisdom. Another thing that really stood out and kind of the title of the podcast today is this idea of growing pains that really that it can be a sign of good discomfort, right? When we are stretching, when we are bursting through the container that no longer fits us. I love how she described that, that this amazing thing happens because we are changing and we're evolving and we're having this awakening happening within us. And that does cause some pain sometimes, right? It shouldn't be, you know, so painful that it it hurts, but it's going to be a little uncomfortable and that it's a good discomfort. It's a growing pain, which means that we're growing and expanding. So thinking about this idea of wellness this month, so much of it is about growing pains, right? And being able to find the place of rest that within us that feels good. And that is really this connection to that deep self-wisdom, that intuition and the growing pains that come with it is a totally natural yet irritating part of it. And so if you're noticing those growing pains happening around you, I would love for you to reach out and let me know what they feel like. I think it'd be so cool if we could really kind of start this collage or this picture gram or whatever you want to call it of what the words we use to describe our growing pains that happen when amazing change is happening within us. So that is something I'd love to hear from you guys. So send that over to Anna at her life unscripted.com so that I can maybe put together some of those words and share them in our Facebook group. And hopefully you guys are following me on Facebook. Her life unscripted is the show page. So go ahead and make sure you like that so that you can get the episodes as they come out. And then as we're starting to release dates for our live events and things like that, you're getting all that information. That is it for our show today on this cold January morning. I hope that all of you are doing well and I look forward to hearing from you. Please do feel free to reach out via the SpeakPipe app. It is linked in the show notes. It'll be great to hear from all of you. And as always, thank you for your time and thank you for letting me into your worlds and into your hearts. I am truly humbled to be able to connect with you guys every week. Take care. Bye-bye.
Want to learn about the latest retreats, workshops, and speaking events hosted by Anna? Head over to HerLifeUnscripted.com to get in on all the juicy details. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast so we can continue to grow our amazing audience. Lastly, be sure and send in your voice feedback via the SpeakPipe app or to Anna at HerLifeUnscripted.com. We can't wait to hear from you. 